Hi everybody, my name is Bob Saunders and I apologise for this weird apparatus that I've got on my head but uh, the microphone I normally use is gone on the blink so I'm using this I, it ra I rather think that I look like Kirby Grant who was in an American TV series called Sky King back in the 50s <laughs> if you if you know who I'm talking about, you're nearly as old as me. Okay, now today I want to talk to you about a subject you may think is boring uh, and doesn't apply to you, and it's purgatory. Okay, but I can assure you it does apply to you because you'll need to go through that experience one day, and it actually affects you in every day of your life even now and I'll explain all that in just a few moments now I looked up in a dictionary the term the word purgatory and it says I'm reading okay a state in which the souls of those who have died in grace must expiate venial sins now, I don't know about you, but I didn't understand a word of that, so I looked up the individual words, and this is vaguely what it means. A state in which the souls, meaning you and me, of those who have died in grace, and grace means to have the favour of God, must expiate, which means to make atonement for, their venial, which means easily excused sins. So, the, de the, the definition means if you're already blessed by God and you haven't done anything very bad, you're going to be able to go through this sort of test thing that's called purgatory quite easily. Now, quite often purgatory is considered to be a place well it's not and I'll explain all that in a minute but uh, I'm sorry I've got to look at my notes because I've got it's quite a complicated subject actually now it all starts really at the moment of birth at your birth or my birth it all starts there now when you're born a, a little baby is born and then a spirit of God is comes down and um, attaches itself to the spirit of God uh, to, to the baby okay so now you've now got a baby and a spirit of God the problem being that this spirit of God lies dormant until you wake it up and that is what you're here for I don't know if you've ever wondered why on earth we're here in this crazy place we call planet earth but the whole idea is just for you to wake up the spirit of God that's lying dormant in association with you it's as simple as that now let's have a look make sure I don't miss anything the, the how do you know when you've got your spirit of God woken up okay it's, it's dormant in a lot of people so we need to, to wake it up and how do we know when we've got this spirit of God woken up? Hold, hold on a minute. <laughs> it's Myrtle again. She appeared in a video the other day, and she's she's got starstruck. She wants to be in every video that I make nowadays. Now, how do we know if we've got uh, our spirit of God woken up? Well, there's a number of ways of doing it. One, you can look, or you can become a Buddhist monk. And through years of meditation and all that and being a strict vegetarian you wake up the spirit of God but it's it doesn't have to be as complicated as that as that you know when you've got your spirit of God woken up when you deliberately do not do harmful things I'll give you a, a silly example you're walking down the street and you notice in front of you a little bug of some kind okay a bug or it might even be just an ant now you've got two choices you either say I don't care about that bug and you walk on it or you avoid it 
Now, in the first case, it means your spirit of God is woken up, and in the second place, second case, it means it isn't. Okay, um, I'll give you another silly example. <coughs> Excuse me. Go into a restaurant, and there's something wrong with the food. It's not hot enough, or it's all burnt, or, or whatever. You've got two choices. You call the waiter over, and you either cause a scandal. I'm not eating this. I've never been so insulted in all my life. And all that sort of thing. Or you gently say to the waiter, I'm sorry, this is uneatable for some reason. Could you please take it away and do something about it? In the second case, your spirit of God is woken up. And in the first case, it isn't. And you, you see people all the time that have got the spirit of God woken up inside them. <coughs> Excuse me decent ordinary people that go to work and do a job and keep calm all day long and try to help their fellow workmates if they can they come home and they're kind to their wives and to their children and don't beat their children up <laughs> that's those are people that have got their spirit of god <coughs> <coughs> do excuse me woken up equally <coughs> you get people that go to work and are quite they can be quite nasty to their fellow workmates or people that come home and they beat their wives up and they beat their children up and they're obviously people that haven't got their spirit of God woken up now I've talked about sort of ordinary people up to a Buddhist monk that's got their spirit of God woken up let's look at the other side of it people that really haven't and and, and I've, there's a reason why I'm saying these things and you get um, in the army and in prisons especially in certain countries where the prisons are very horrible places I mean in Europe where I live I think prisons are pretty good and the prison guards are not allowed to do very much unpleasant things but in some countries they're given free reign to torture prisoners and so on and once again, it's pretty obvious if somebody tortures another person, their spirit of God is not woken up. Um, in the army, I, I had to do... I'm sorry, I've got this bloody cat. You're getting a bit of a nuisance, Myrtle. Um, uh, I, I had to do my national service, and I met two sergeant majors who were really horrible people. They 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 would wake up in the morning and the f as soon as they were ready they'd be out and marching around the parade grounds and around all the barracks and all that hoping against hope to find somebody that they could criticize somebody whose boots weren't shiny enough somebody whose cap badge wasn't polished and they would scream and howl and put these people on charges and really enjoy making life as unpleasant as possible now it's fairly obvious that that those people their spirit of God is not woken up. There's a third group that I'd like to talk about, and these, in my opinion, are probably the worst. And this is so called Illuminati, these extremely rich people who um, seem to have broken all contact with their fellow man. These, they call us the sheeple. They. Um, they're the ones that instigate wars. They're the ones that instigate all the ups and downs of the stock market and um, are in part responsible for that crisis in America and also which happened in Spain where people were thrown out of their houses, the subprime thing, and so on and so on. And they, they just don't care about us at all. Now... To me, that is a very serious case of not having your, your spirit of God woken up. And indeed, in, uh, they could even be possessed with evil spirits, th this sort of person. Okay, now, excuse me, I've just got to look at my notes again. Um, right, so, now, the point I'm, reason why I'm saying all that is that if you take the trouble to wake your spirit of God up just by doing kind acts acts whenever you can and avoiding doing horrible things to people when you can 
that Spirit of God wakes up and that is going to stand you in good stead when you die because when you die what happens is you go off generally speaking through this long tunnel that I've spoken about before and other people have too and you appear in Summerland okay now you're left there for a while to acclimatize to the to the place and then you're given what my guides call a life review and that's this purgatory thing and it's a bit weird it's not actually happened to me but I've had it described to me that more or less every detail of your life appears before you in a sort of hologram you experience it probably in your mind you know and um, you you have you you've got to decide yourself whether what you did was right or wrong nobody criticizes you there's an angel present controlling the whole thing but or, or a spirit guide if you like present controlling the whole thing but nobody criticizes you you have to think about what you did yourself now, if you were unkind at some stage to one of your children or your wife, when you see this little scene, you have to say to yourself, oh, I, I'm sorry I did that, and feel remorse. Then you forgive yourself, okay? Now, you don't have to, but if, if you feel that you shouldn't have done that, you feel remorse and you're sorry that you did it, you forgive yourself you're the only one that can forgive yourself because you're the one who did all that and you go on through your whole life uh, and at the end of it all you, you, th you have to think about were there things that I was glad that I, w I did bad things it must be stupid to do that You've, we all do bad things but most of us don't do them on purpose we lose our temper because we're tired and irritable and one of our kids is making a noise or something and we shout at them and send them off to their bedrooms or whatever these things happen okay but if when we see it in this life review we say oh i wish i hadn't done that i'm, I'm sorry i did that then you forgive yourself now and and then you, you've passed in a sense you you go on and that is this so-called purgatory now but let's have a look at the the horrible people the people that work in in prisons where they're allowed to torture people these illuminati people that um have spent their whole life um trying to dominate people and make life misery for as many people as they possibly can these sergeant majors that i told you about that were shouting and hollering making life as miserable as possible when they go through their life review they're faced with the same choice am i sorry about what i did or is my only regret that i didn't do it enough and i'd love to go back and do some more what a pity i can't get back there and really lay on them a bit more now that's their choice if they're not sorry about what they did they actually enjoyed it and wish they could do some more that's their choice if they but what what happens then is that they have to go off to what we call hell and there's various levels of hell there's not just one level De depending on what you've done there's various levels and you you have to go down to one of those areas where people like that those people um, are able to inflict pain and suffering on them as they, indeed they are able to inflict pain and suffering on the other people that are there, the like-minded people that are there. And, uh, and, and that goes on until the person concerned says, hold on, this is stupid, what on earth am I doing down here? I can't stay here eternally battling and fighting and being hurt by these people and hurting them. It, it makes no sense and, and starts to feel remorse what he did then an angel will come and take that person and lift him or her up to a higher level and they gradually can work their way back into the proper what we call heaven okay but that's what this purgatory thing is have I 
yeah I've more or less said all I need to say that's what purgatory is it's quite simply a place that you go to where you have to have this life review and decide for yourself whether the things that you did wrong you're sorry for or not if you're if you're sorry you go on into the lovely warm heavenly spheres if you if you're not sorry then you have to go down into the horrible cold dark things we call hell okay by the way uh, the, this burning part of hell I, I've mentioned in another video I've never seen and my wife who is a medium has never seen but we won't worry about that hell, hell really exists that I can assure you but now the thing is that you can affect today this life review because if you take the trouble to wake up the God particle in you the spirit of God and start to become a kind and nice person uh, eventually possibly think even becoming vegetarian to avoid the slaughter of, of all these poor animals uh, and think about when you're faced with a with a situation where you're gonna lose your temper or you've got the chance to inflict suffering on somebody what whatever it might be if you say no I'm not going to do that then that makes the purgatory bit your life review that much simpler because you've got less things to answer to okay so that's what I wanted to say a lot of people have asked me what purgatory is I've done my best to explain it and in my opinion it's it happens at every moment of every day now we're, we're, we're p good people are constantly in a sense doing a life review because they're consciously not doing anybody any harm and consciously trying to do good and so, as I, I just repeat when you go up <coughs> when you die and you go to heaven and you face with this life review it makes it so much easier to, to come to terms with it all okay that's what I wanted to say I hope it wasn't too long and too boring <laughs> okay thank you bye bye